<laughs> Josh is going to introduce our candidate in our county who's running against Leonard Lance. So if any of you, yes. <laughs> so if any of you have had the, and any experience uh, having to deal with Leonard Lance, you, and paid attention to Leonard Lance, you know that he says one thing and then does another. So we're really excited that we have somebody who's going to challenge him. And Josh is going to tell us just a bit, and then Peter will speak for just a moment as well. Thank you. Josh? Thank you so much, uh, Somerset County. Uh, and Margaret, thank you so much for inviting us and uh, putting on this phenomenal event. I just want to take note right now. Uh, I am not from your district. You're from your county. Um, and I have been traveling all over the district. And I need to tell you, uh, because of the hard work from Chairwoman Peg Schaefer, this county is by far one of the most well-organized and well-run counties in the entire state. So let's give up for our wonderful Chairwoman. I'm going to be very brief because I know nobody wants to hear from me. I'm going to introduce the wonderful man who uh, has inspired me to be here tonight. That is a, a lifelong activist, a humanitarian, and a social worker who has spent his entire life fighting for the average person, and has been fighting for a better future for all of us. So I just want to bring up Peter Jacob. Good evening, my fellow Democrats. Good evening. 55 days to election, we got to ramp up that energy, folks. Again, my name is Peter Jacob. As many of you may know, I am a old school Democrat, a New Deal Democrat, or to put it simply, a Roosevelt Democrat. And when I say Roosevelt Democrat, I don't mean just FDR, I mean Elnor too. Especially Elnor. After the 1929 financial collapse, these two individuals came together and put together policies, not just for our nation, but for our world to ensure that something like the American Dream was not just available to people here, but around the world. You see, my parents came to this country from India in 1986 with just $20 in their pockets, hearts full of hope, and a six-month-old baby in their arms. Me. They were able to establish a small business, purchase a beautiful home in the township of Union, where I currently live and where I grew up, put their children through college, and I was able to get my master's in social work from Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri. I became a social worker because I read a book in college, and one of the reasons I did become a social worker is because it was a book about Eleanor Roosevelt, who was one of the leading champions who worked with people around the world to put together the UN Declaration of Human Rights. And one of those articles within that declaration is the fact that people should be free of slavery. And that made it clear. Sure, we, we got rid of uh, slavery in the 1850s in this country, but it was live and well during that time throughout the world, as well as in this our nation itself. It's illegal everywhere, but it happens everywhere. And in order to protect freedom, that basic human right was something I became passionate about fighting for. And that's why I got engaged with anti-human trafficking efforts. I worked for an organization called the Coalition to Against Trafficking in Women International. I later went on in grad school to be the coordinator of the rescue and restore victims of human trafficking in the city of St. Louis, Missouri. The challenges I saw were not anything, anything at all to even discuss here. The suffering that many women went through sexually, uh, forced labor, and so on. And in fact, our nation was one of the leaders in addressing this issue of human trafficking. You see, the State Department put together what's called the Trafficking in Victims in Persons uh, report that they put out annually. And until Hillary Clinton became the Secretary of State, we were not evaluating our own nation and our own uh, criteria and our own efforts in combating human trafficking. So Secretary Clinton was the first one to address that when it comes to our nation. During this, this, this same time, you know, my, my focus as, as someone going into social work was these international issues of human trafficking and so forth. 
But seeing the challenges we were facing here in the 21st century, I also realized at the same time that the socioeconomic challenges are far too great in our own nation. The way we are treating each and every single person throughout our nation. And as a social worker, I met the mothers who were working two, three jobs, did not have time to come home and help their, their children with homework. I saw the young children who have been uh, poorly treated by individuals who took advantage of them because they were undocumented and they had no place to go. I saw this in Union County, right here in the United States. And I asked myself, why is this happening? Why in our nation is this happening? And it simply has to do with how we value women in our society. That is why human trafficking continues. What's the place for a man to address demand in human trafficking? That's, those were the things I wanted to get to. And I noticed that one major factor is the media. And I'm not just talking about music or movies. I'm also talking about the news media. And today, when we look at the media, we are talking about a female, a candidate for president. And the only thing they could actually talk about is her physical health. When in reality, you have this other candidate, whose name shall not be mentioned more than once tonight, who should be really evaluated for his mental health. Okay. <laughs> and to put it in Mr. Trump's words, Mr. Trump, I am a social worker. Believe me, I know the best social workers and psychiatrists. If you want to be buried in Bedminster in New Jersey, I also recommend you first get an evaluation thoroughly from a psychiatrist right here in New Jersey. Believe me, I know the best. Believe me. But that's at the national level. Let's talk about more locally. Let's talk about Mr. Lance who had his chance. Let's talk about the fact that the greatest accomplishment he has had all year is to go to an ice cream shop in Lambertville and do a press release. By the way, that ice cream shop has a Peter Jacob sign in there, so that's probably why he went. That's his greatest accomplishment, and that is what our media is reporting on. What they should be reporting on is the fact that he did not support the Paycheck Fairness Act in 2016. He did not support. There's no question about it, folks. Equal pay for equal work cannot wait, and that is something I am committed to. When I get to Congress. But I can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. Men, I'm looking at you today. We need to step up. It's 2016. We need to get out. We need to get involved. And for all the women who are being honored here today, please embrace us. Let's work together. We have a saying in our campaign, democracy is not a noun. It is not just pressing that button on November 8th. It is a verb. You have to get out and get active. Less than 55 days to go. Let's make some positive changes throughout our community, our nation, and our world. Thank you so much. Important message, truly. Uh, before I came tonight, my husband and I were talking, and he said, uh, or he and I were talking about it, he said, Margaret, say two words that will skip everybody in this room. President Trump. <laughs> and if that doesn't scare us to go out and vote, to get everybody we know out to vote, it better. <laughs>